Howdy, I'm Gary, Dillon Precision's Human Manual. I'm gonna unbox and assemble the Dillon RL550C, one of my favorite reloading machines. So the first thing we need to do is pull some staples out of the box. Handy Leatherman tools. Alrighty, now that the staples are all out, let's open up the box and see what we got. Like onions and ogres and other Dillon machines, the 550C has layers. So, the top layer, we have Get Ready to Reload, which is basically a written edition of what I'm doing now. We have the instruction manual. We have the low primer alarm. This device makes an annoying sound when you get down to about three primers left in the primer feed on the machine. Standard handle, knob type, one each with hardware. Accessory package containing your pickup tubes, your fail safe rod for the powder system, the operating rod for the priming system, large magazine tube because the machine will come set up with the small primer feed installed, uh, extra tips, extra clips. The second layer, accessory box, has stuff inside, powder measure with the small powder bar installed, the large powder bar comes in the accessory box and the actual machine, which is wrapped in a plastic bag in case your delivery person leaves it out in a driving rainstorm to keep the machine from being damaged. So now that everything's out of the box, let's get some of this packaging out of our way. I'm here, we don't need the manuals. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do now that everything is out of the box is I'm gonna open up the other box, which is the optional strong mount. Uh, for our purposes, it makes it easier to photograph on the machine. It's a nice device. What it does is it raises the machine so that all of the machine is up above the top of your bench. So if you have drawers underneath like we have here, the machine's not hanging down in front of them. In the strong mount, we have the tray for the loaded rounds, bag of mounting hardware, and two side plates. They are bilaterally symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which one goes on which side. And an instruction sheet. Out of the way. So now we're going to attach the side plates to the frame of our machine. So let's push our hardware through on one side. On. Flip it over, do the same thing to the other side. Alrighty, it's finger tight, so now we can get it upright on our bench. Now we're going to mount it to our optional stand. I find it best just to leave these bolts just finger tight while you're putting the machine on the plate just to allow everything to center itself up. Otherwise you're gonna have to like bow the plates or loosen stuff and retighten it.
Alrighty, now that everything is in position, start from the bottom, work your way up when tightening the hardware. Alrighty, now that the machine is mounted up here, next step is to attach the handle. Uh, this is the stock handle, ball knob end. There is an aftermarket handle with a roller on it available uh, if you've got like bad shoulders or a need for speed. But for me, the standard one works fine. So put the washer on top. Insert the handle. It's a nylock nut, so you're going to feel resistance after the first few threads. There's a hole in the handle so you can use a hex key wrench to hold it in place while you tighten the, the nylock nut. Alrighty, now that the machine is mounted and these bolts are tightened like you would as headers on a small block Chevy by the way, we're going to open up the accessory boxes. There's some stuff in here we need to install. So we have bubbles to pop. We have the loaded cartridge chute bracket for if you're not on the strong mount. We have a set of hex key wrenches that fit everything on the machine. We have a blue bin. We have a spent primer catcher cup. We have packaging we don't need. And we have a bag of stuff. And within the bag of stuff, we have the large primer slide. The machine has the small priming system on it. So this is one of the parts you'll need along with your magazine tube to change over the primer size. You have the large powder bar. You're going to use this for say 44 magnums, 41 magnum, and rifle cartridges throwing up to about 50 to 55 grains of powder. Starting at about 23 or 24 grains. So if you're going to load 223, 556, five, you'll need to switch to this bar. You also have the essential accessories. You've got the bolt that holds the shell plate down. You've got the spring and ball that locate the shell plate, the set screw that keeps this bolt from tightening, the index sprocket that you push because the 550C is manually indexed, and a set of Dillon die lock rings because ours are hexagon, they're easier to set, and they take up less room than if you're using other brands of dies. Okay. On the back of the spent primer cup, there's an inverted V-notch. It hangs on this post on the right link arm, just like that. Alrighty, next item to attach is the loaded cartridge chute bracket. Now, if your machine is bolted directly to the bench, you're going to use the standard chute bracket that comes with the machine. It's going to sit off the edge of your bench, and it's held in with two wood screws or sheet metal screws, or I suppose you could drill it out and put a bolt through there. Uh, then the plastic bin hangs off of it like that. However, because we're on a strong mount for, for more clarification, we're going to use the one that bolts on with it. And you want these almost as tight as a small block Chevy head because it's going to be supporting the weight of all the loaded rounds in that plastic bin. This hangs off the top like that. The next step is we need to attach the shell plate, the indexing sprocket, the shell plate bolt, and a few other bits and pieces. So first, in the accessory bag was the spring and detent ball. That goes at the hole at 9 o'clock position if you're standing in front of the machine. Do not drop it into the middle hole because if you do, you'll have to unbolt the machine and turn it upside down because the detent ball is stainless and won't pick up with a magnet. Next, caliber conversion kit. That's going to have your shell plate, your three locator pins, and the powder funnel for your specific cartridge. We're doing 9mm today, so we're going to have an F funnel. The locator pins are all going to be marked number 3, 
and the shell plate's going to be marked number five. So next, we're going to put the shell plate on. It goes underneath this wire. This is the ejector wire. That's what kicks the loaded cartridges out. So get it underneath there. The detent ball will push up on it. The index sprocket goes on next. And there's four little pegs that go into the four holes in the top of the shell plate. When that sits down, shell plate bolt goes in next. And with that, you can't tighten it too tight or you will lock it up and the show plate won't turn. So ideally we recommend you tighten the show plate all the way down by hand, back it up about an eighth of a turn. To test it, push down on the edge of the show plate. If it feels springy, it needs to be just a little bit tighter. It should just barely move up and down. And if you hold the bolt in place, it should rotate and you should feel the little detent ball click in place. Once that's done, pull the handle down. You have a set screw with a brass tip. The reason it has a brass tip is that tip will deform when you tighten it and match the curvature of the shell plate bolt. It requires a 1 8 inch hex key wrench. So tighten it in until it stops and then give it just a little extra oomph just to make sure that that brass is seated securely against the shell plate bolt. Now test it. Does it push up? Rotates. You feel the detent ball click. There's no up and down movement in the shell plate. We're golden. When the 550C is shipped to you, it's going to come set up for small primers because that seems to be the most popular size. However, it also includes the parts necessary to change it from small to large in case you're going to need to start off by loading large primers. So it's very easy to change. It's two parts, it's two bolts. It's quick, it's easy, and you can do it. So first, let's get the spent primer cup out of our way. Second, there's a spring attached to the underside of the back of the primer side. Just unhook it, pull it down. Next, you're going to need a 5 30 seconds hex key wrench. There's two bolts that go up into the underside of the priming system through the frame. We're going to remove those. Bolt one. Hold the primer feed because that's what holds it in place. Bolt two. Pull the handle down a little. Primer feed body comes off. Primer slide comes off. Now you'll notice the small primer cup is brass colored. The large primer cup is silver colored, so it's easily to visually distinguish between the two of them. So when it comes to reassembly, take the primer side in your hand, put it up into the underside of the platform so it goes into the hole in the platform where the primer comes up. Lift up the handle. What that does is that makes your primer slide align properly. Next, out of your bag of tubes, here's one with a red tip. That's the magazine tube. It's got a red tip. It's longer than the pickup tube. And we'll show you that the large primer tube has a thinner wall than the small does. So now we're going to unscrew this silver knurled cap off of the primer shield. And you'll see that about 3 8 inch of the top of the magazine tube protrudes above the top. So we're going to pull that out. Again, you can see the small one has a blue tip and there's a wall thickness difference. Thinner wall for large primer. Now when you put this in there, notice that there's a ridge on one side of the red tip and a T-slot on the other. That needs to be oriented in here. So the T-slot goes towards the front where the primer fits, comes out, and there's a groove inside this housing that that ridge slides into. So when it's installed correctly, the bottom of the red tip almost touches the top of the white pin. Put the knurled cap back on, just snug. It's not a small block Chevy, you don't need to torque it because all you're going to do is distort the plastic tip if you do. Manipulate it and get the primer feed over the slide because that's what holds the primer feed body in alignment so it picks up a primer. When you put these screws in, you just need to snug it just enough to keep it from loosening up. You don't need to torque it down. 
reattach the spring. Voila, we've changed primer sizes. Alrighty, now that the primer feed is in whatever the appropriate size for your reloading is, the next step is to install the operating rod. That's packed in with the tubes, silver wire, a bent piano wire spring, so it's pretty stiff. So the easy way to put this in, pull the handle about halfway down, grab the primer side, pull it all the way out. The short bent end goes into a hole in this bracket, then it lays on top of the small white roller and in front of the large white roller. Let the slide go in. Make sure everything lines up. To take it off, do it in the reverse. Pull the handle part way down, pull the slide back by hand, comes out from between the rollers, pull it out of the bracket. The next step is to install the powder measure on the machine. Now I would like to give you a brief explanation of how the powder measure works so everybody understands why you're going to be hanging stuff on it in a minute. The powder measure is case activated. There's a fail safe rod that does not activate the powder measure. This funnel will sit inside of this die and you adjust the height of this die in the tool head so that the case pushes it up which cams this bar over to drop a full powder charge. Now you'll notice this piece is bent. No, that did not happen while shipping. It's intentionally bent. The idea is that as the powder bar comes back, this linkage momentarily blocks the powder bar from coming back far enough to pick up the next charge of powder until after the fail-safe rod has pulled it down and retracted the powder bar completely. The reason for this is that if you're messing around weighing charges and you get distracted, it makes it less likely that you'll accidentally double charge a case. So to set this up, first, it's time for the rubber band to go. There's two screws, use a 532nd six key wrench, and you're only gonna back them about halfway out. You do not need to remove the clamp entirely. So you can slide the half circle shaped clamp forward, the die comes out. Powder funnel drops inside the die. Now there's two styles of funnels. There's this style which expands the case that's used for straight wall handgun and straight wall rifle cartridges. The other kind, if you're loading a rifle, is typically gonna look flat on the bottom because the neck and shoulder of the case go up inside. But we're setting up for nine millimeters so we need to expand the case mouth. So drop that in. And I'm going to start by turning that down until I feel the bottom of the die just start to come out the bottom of the tool head. Then reattach this, push the clamp in, and just finger tighten these screws because we're going to end up having to readjust this die up or down. Okay, now we're going to take a piece of brass, insert it into the shell plate of the second station, and as we pull the handle down, you're going to watch the powder bar. It needs to go all the way over before the handle bottoms out if you're going to flare the case. So you push down. That's pushing the case up onto the flaring shoulder on that funnel, and it pushes this powder bar all the way over. Pull it out, check it. We're flared a little too much. Ideally, you want to flare the case about 10 to 20 thousandths. So we're going to just back that die up about half a turn. Grab another piece of brass and we'll try it again. Okay, so we've made an adjustment to the die. I'm gonna try it again. Goes over and that's about 10 thousandths. So what you wanna do is put the case back up in the die, pull the handle down so the powder bar is activated and tighten the die lock ring with the powder measure in the activated position in the case pushing up on it. The reason for that is it centers the die in the threads of the tool head so that that funnel goes straight into the case because that's the path of least resistance and that's the path that the bullet is going to follow. Slide that down. The next step is we need the fail safe rod. That's what's going to retract this. Alrighty, now when you put this in, this rod has two bends 
It goes in from the back, goes in through the oval, comes out the round hole in the front, hangs down. And then you rotate the powder measure so that that rod hangs straight. Press this bushing up. And now the long boring part is you're gonna tighten this blue wing nut up until that spring above it is partially compressed. We do want to be able to slip a credit card between the coils. So let's lift the handle up, hold it forward. You can see this is pulled down all the way. At the first station where you insert the case into the shell plate, there's a spring here that looks like a bent paper clip. Its purpose in life is to keep the case from coming out of the shell plate as you index it. So you have to adjust this every time you change calibers with a different rim diameter. So loosen this up, slide it back out of the way, put a piece of brass in, run it in until it just touches the rim and then back it away just a couple of thousands. It's not there to push the case into the shell plate. It's there to keep the case from backing out of the shell plate. Once you got it held down, snug the set screw. And at this point, case slides out, case goes in. But when you're pushing forward on the handle to seat the primer, the case stays in alignment with the primer. Okay, next we're going to address those three little brass pins in the conversion kit. They go into holes in the platforms at stations two, three, and four. Although you don't need to install them in any particular order. Their purpose in life is they keep the case from coming out of the shell plate at those stations underneath the dies. But if you want to weigh a powder charge, measure the bullet seating deck, check a crimp. The button lifts out, the case slides out, you're not interrupting the rest of the process. The one electronic sensor on the 550C is the low primer alarm. It makes an annoying sound at you when you get down to about three primers left in the magazine tube to keep you from loading ammo without primers in it and making little tiny salt and pepper shakers. So you have the follower rod, the alarm, and a battery. You'll notice it's marked plus and minus for the orientation of the battery. Press down on the cover, put the battery in. That's the annoying sound it makes. This just presses over the top of the knurled cap. And normally you would put primers in the tube, flip this forward, and the follower rod rests on top of the primers. As you use up primers and it goes down, when you get down to where there's three left, you hear that, so that means it's time to either add more primers or finish up your reloading for that time period. Alrighty, one other step we're gonna show you is if you have the strong amount, how to attach the optional aluminum bullet tray to it. Comes in a nice little box. Let's unzip it. In here you have the bracket, hardware, and the aluminum tray itself. First thing to do is to attach the aluminum bullet tray to the top of the strong mount. Hardware is included. When you put the bullet tray on the strong mount, the bullet tray itself is going to be canted forward. It is going to be tipped towards you to present bullets to your hand. It is not horizontal. Again, it's going to be tipped forward. So let's start by attaching the bullet tray to the bracket. Once that's mounted, 
bolt and washer. Top hole goes in the top front hole. Then all I have to do is rock it forward, find the other hole that lines up, and snug everything up, and you're ready. And there you have it. We've assembled the RL550C as it comes out of the box. We've shown you how to use the optional strong mount, how to use the optional bullet tray. We have not covered how to install dies or how to adjust the powder measure, but those are covered in tech tips that are available on our website, dillonprecision.com. And if those don't help, please don't be shy. Pick up the phone and call us, 800-223-4570. Our customer service reps are your friend at the factory. We're there to help you. Thanks.